What's up guys, my name's Brandon and Apple just released iOS 12.5.1 for older devices that are not supported with iOS 13 or iOS 14. And this update comes about a month after the release of iOS 12.5, which I actually did not cover here on the channel. So that's kind of just another reason I wanted to make this video today on 12.5.1. So anyways, in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at what's changed in this update. We're gonna talk about the performance, we're gonna talk about the battery life, the security patches, and of course, if you should update or not. So let's start off with the size of this update. So you can see I have my iPhone 6 right here, and the update size came in just under 200 megabytes at 199.8, and it was smaller on my iPhone 5S that I updated as well. It was around 98 megabytes. So the size will vary depending on your device and also which version you are coming from. And then right below that, you can see here on the software update page, it tells exactly what has changed in this update, which we'll talk about here in a moment. But first, let's go ahead and check out the build number for this new update. Let's go to our settings, general about, tap on 12.5.1. You can see the build number there is 16H22. And then if we scroll down a little bit to the modem firmware, you can see that the modem firmware has not been changed. It remains at 7.80.04. And that's likely not a big deal because I've not really heard anybody talk about cell connectivity issues on these iOS 12 versions. So now what's new in iOS 12.5 and 12.5.1? So let's backtrack a little bit to iOS 12.5 since I did not cover that here on the channel. That was a hectic week when it came out and I just never got around to making the video on 12.5 even though I made videos on 12.4.5. 12.4.9 .4 and previous versions as well. But anyways, iOS 12.5 was released to basically allow users to opt in to get COVID-19 exposure notifications. So if you go into our settings and then scroll down, you will see exposure notifications right there. And then you can see we have the option to turn on exposure notifications. Then you also have the toggle for availability alerts that basically gives you an alert when exposure notifications are available in your current region. So obviously the newer phones have had these options for a while, but the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 5S and other devices that are not able to get iOS 14 can now you know, opt in for exposure notifications for COVID-19. And then we also got a security patch right here in iOS 12.5. You can see that it's not a kernel exploit or anything like that. It's not really an exploit at all. Basically the impact is only unauthorized code execution may lead to an authentication policy violation. So, and then you can see the description, this issue was addressed with improved checks. So, and you can see it was discovered by Apple there on the CVE. So really nothing major at all. It's not anything that was going to impact or you know have an impact on your security of your device or prevent jailbreaks or anything like that so a very small security patch there in 12.5 and then when it comes to 12.5.1 apple did not post anything in terms of cve so nothing publicly has been posted about the security contents of 12.5.1 and of course since we did not have any kernel issues fixed or anything like that jailbreaks are going to work just fine on 12.5 and 12.5.1. So if you're using the uncover or the check rain jailbreaks, either one of those will work fine, of course, once they're updated on both 12.5 and 12.5.1. So that's good to know if you are still into jailbreaking. Now, as far as the performance goes, performance on 12.5 actually seemed a little bit better than 12.4.9 or any of the 12.4.x versions. And I actually did the Geekbench tests on all those as well. And that kind of confirmed my suspicion. Now, obviously it's hard to go from something like an iPhone 12 back to the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 5S. But when 12.5 released last month, I did use it for a couple of days and 12.5.1 feels exactly the same in terms of performance, but 12.5 was a slight improvement over the 12.4.x versions. And if we go into our Geekbench scores right here, you can see I did just run a Geekbench score on 12.5.1 and we got a 311 single core and a 595 on the multi-core you can kind of see how it compares there of course this was what was this 12.4.9 i believe yes 12.4.9 right there got a 308 and a 582 so you can see the improvement over time there so really nice to see improvements here on 12.5 and 12.5.1 on the iphone 6 it was the same deal with the iphone 5s but of course i like to use the 6 because that is the latest device supported on these iOS 12 versions. I also wanted to address an issue that I had on iOS 12.4.8, where my phones would just really heat up. So my iPhone 6 and my 5S would both really heat up a lot on that update, no matter what I did, even just on the home screen, it would be extremely hot. And 12.4.9 fixed that, and it seems like 12.5.1 fixed it even further, because 12.4.9, my device still got a little bit hot, 
But on 12.5.1, I really don't feel any heat at all coming from the iPhone 6, and it was the same with my 5S as well. So that is really good news, and that was really the only complaint I had at all on these older devices. That was the only, you could say, bug that I had on these older devices, and it seems to be completely fixed now, which is just excellent news, and that's another testament. You know, you can kind of categorize that under the performance section. But overall, the performance really isn't that bad. Of course, there is a little bit of stutter every now and then, especially when I go out of photos, when I go into photos and then out of it, you will see a slight stutter. You probably know it earlier in the video but for a device with just one gigabyte of ram it's really not all too bad i mean it's something you can live with of course again being used to the newer phones it's hard to go back and you know see this and use this it doesn't feel fast at all but it's usable you could use it throughout a day with no issue especially with these constant software updates which is just incredible that apple is still pushing out updates for these extremely old devices now when it comes to the battery life this is the only issue you're going to have if you wanted to use one of these phones on a daily basis because of course the battery life is not going to be great you will have to plug it in multiple times throughout the day that's one of the biggest improvements apple has done year over year is with the battery so Battery though on 12.5.1 is really no different from 12.5 or the 12.4.x versions. You really will not notice any type of battery improvement with pretty much any of these updates anymore because Apple is not really touching the battery at all. In these iOS 12 updates, they're mainly just pushing out security fixes and of course little bugs to do with the COVID-19 exposure notifications and just really small things like that. You're not really seeing any type of visual improvements. You're not getting new options, anything at all that would really impact the battery. So don't expect any type of battery improvements. And of course it shouldn't get worse either. So just don't go into this update expecting anything to change with the battery life. So there's really not a ton to talk about with this update, but if you're wondering if you should update, I say yes, there's really no reason not to update to 12.5 or 12.5.1. We did get the security enhancements on iOS 12.5. 12.5.1 kind of patches up some things as well and fixes up some minor bugs related to the COVID-19 exposure notifications. And of course, the jailbreaks do still work on 12.5 and 12.5.1. So again, there's really no downside to updating to this new version of 12.5.1 on your iPhone 6, 5S, or whatever device you are running. Now, if you have a newer device than the iPhone 5S, the iPhone 6, and you also get the iOS 14 updates and the beta updates as well, I know you might be wondering when we can see the next iOS 14 release. And I think we could actually see a new version of iOS 14.4, a new beta of 14.4 as early as tomorrow, Tuesday, January 12th. Now, as far as a public release, we could see a 14.3.1 sometime soon, but probably not this week. It's possible, but probably not this week. It just really depends on what we see in terms of the 14.4 beta and what that build number is. That really will tell us a lot as well. So just stay tuned to the channel. Of course, I will be posting videos on these new iOS updates. And of course, I will keep you updated over on Twitter as well so anyways guys there you have it that is ios 12.5.1 for the iphone 6 iphone 5s and all other devices that are not able to update to ios 13 or ios 14. so not much in this video of course it wasn't a huge update but i do like to keep you guys informed and let you guys know when a new update comes out no matter how big or small just to keep you guys in the loop so i hope you did enjoy this video if you did i would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up and of course if you guys want me to keep making videos on these old ios 12 updates apple just seems to continue pushing them out which is just insane that they're doing that i mean no other manufacturers doing that in terms of software updates still supporting such old devices so that's incredible but if you guys want me to keep you know making these videos on these older versions of ios let me know with a comment down below and of course with a thumbs up on this video but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon